Hi, this is Presh Talwalkar. Can you solve this deceptively difficult geometry problem? Consider a rectangle R that's made up of many smaller rectangles. And each of these small rectangles has either an integer width or an integer height. Or possibly both. Your job is to prove the large rectangle R also has this property, that the large rectangle also has either an integer width or an integer height, or possibly both. Give this puzzle a try, and when you're ready, keep watching the video for the solution. In the video description, I provided a link to 14 different ways that you can solve this problem, some which actually involve some pretty advanced mathematics. In this video, I'm going to present one of the proofs, which is the checkerboard proof. Imagine a checkerboard that's tiled with light and dark squares alternately. Each tile has a height and width of one half. That means two tiles together will make an integer height or an integer width. And I'm going to draw grid lines for that. So the first step of the proof is to show that a rectangle with integer width covers equal areas of light and dark squares. So imagine a rectangle that has an integer width. Because it has integer width, it's going to line up perfectly with two of the vertical lines. Because it has that, you can see that there are an equal number of columns that start with the light square as there are that start with the dark square. So you can pair up the areas of two columns together and you can see that the entire rectangle is going to cover an equal area of light and dark squares. Furthermore, this property is going to hold even if you translate this across. You can see on the far left there's a column which is kind of broken, starts with a dark square, but that's going to exactly compensate for the very far right column that starts with a dark square. And so you can pair up the columns again and you're going to see this rectangle covers an equal amount of light and dark squares. And by extension this is going to hold true even if I translate it vertically. The next step in the proof is to show that a rectangle with integer height similarly covers equal areas of light and dark squares. It's a very similar proof. A rectangle with integer height is going to line up exactly with two of the horizontal lines. So you can see that the rows are going to have an equal number that start with a light or a dark square, and therefore you can pair up the areas. And once again, this is going to hold true even if you translate this rectangle up you're going to see it covers an equal amount of light and dark squares. And even if you shift it to the right, you're going to see there's an equal amount that this rectangle covers of light and dark squares. Now for completeness, we need to show that the rectangle without integer height or integer width is not going to cover equal areas of light or dark squares. So this is a little slightly more complicated step of the proof, but let me try and explain it. So let's say you have a rectangle with has, which has a width of A and a height of B, and neither are integer lengths. So if I place this rectangle on a grid, it's not going to line up with any of the vertical or horizontal lines. Where it will line up is we're going to round the number A down. We'll call this the floor of A. This is rounding the number A down. And it'll line up by rounding the height B down to the floor of B. So we have placed this rectangle and we've divided it up into four different sections on our checkerboard. Now this lower left quadrant has a width of floor of A and a height of floor of B. So that's an integer width and an integer height. So this region clearly covers equal areas of light and dark squares. If we look at the region right above that, this region will have a width that's equal to the floor of A. So that's an integer width. So this region also covers equal amounts of light and dark squares. The third region has a height that's equal to the floor of B. The floor of B is an integer height, so this region also covers equal amounts of light and dark squares. Where we run into trouble is that very final quadrant. This has neither an integer width nor an integer height, and there's no way we're going to be able to cover equal amounts of light and dark squares. So because this one little area doesn't cover equal amounts of light and dark squares, this entire rectangle does not cover equal amounts of light and dark squares. So what we've proven 
is that a rectangle covers equal areas of light and dark squares if and only if at least one side is an integer length. So let's put all that together. Here's a checkerboard and we want to prove something about our original rectangle R. So we don't know that this rectangle is going to line up exactly along one of the grid lines. But we do know is that each of its smaller rectangles, right, each of these smaller tiles that make up that large rectangle, we know each one has an integer width or an integer height. So each one of these is going to cover equal areas of light and dark squares. So as we fill in the entire rectangle by these smaller rectangles, we then end up that since each small rectangle covers equal areas of light and dark squares, therefore the entire large rectangle covers equal areas of light and dark squares, which means that at least one of its sides is an integer. And therefore, the rectangle R has at least one side that's an integer length. Did you figure it out? Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel. I make videos on math and game theory. You can catch me on my blog, Mind Your Decisions, which you can follow on Facebook, Google Plus, and Patreon. You can catch me on social media at Presh Talwalker. And if you like this video, please check out my books. There are links in the video description.